Good morning and welcome to St. Dorothy's Parish Church in Gilmer for this Sunday of uh, the third Sunday before Advent for our Holy Communion service. Our opening hymn is hymn number 52, Christ whose glory fills the skies, Christ the true, the only light. Confirm and 
strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We stand to sing the glory. Temple police who were there. 
and that he would eventually be put to death there. But as they were passing through Jericho, a large crowd was following him because of what he had said, or maybe he had uh, healed other people there that we don't know about. But anyway, he was passing outside Jericho when there was a blind man called Bartimaeus in the Gospel, and he was sitting begging as usual, day by day, year by year. And with the noise of the crowd passing by, he inquires of some of the people, what's going on? Who is there? And somebody has said to him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Now, he would never have seen Jesus of Nazareth, but he must have heard about him. He must have heard that this man, whoever he was, was some kind of a miracle worker. Maybe my day of luck has come. Maybe he will be able to do something for me. But then, just at that moment, Jesus stands still. Because he sees blind Bartimaeus. And was always Jesus' custom, he never passed by anybody whom he saw needed help. And so he calls blind Bartimaeus. And the people around say, this is your lucky day, come on, he's looking for you. And suddenly Bartimaeus jumps up, throws the cloak off, and he says, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now one thing he must have heard, uh, blind Bartimaeus and everybody else, they must have heard that Jesus was of royal descent. Son of David. If he was a son of David, if he has royal blood in him, well, then he must have lots of money. So he cries out, have mercy on me. And that's really what that meant. Anybody who said, have mercy on me, really meant, give me some money. And so Jesus looked at him. And Jesus asked him a rather strange question. He could see that the man was, the man was blind, but he asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And maybe that's not such a damned question after all. Because first of all, Bartimaeus would have to weigh up two things. First of all, he would have to weigh up, do I have enough faith in this Jesus that he would be able to do something for me, or am I simply going to be stupid? So he thought, maybe this man can do something for me. So therefore his faith would have been strong enough in Jesus, whoever he was to him, strong enough to say, yes, I want to receive my sight. But the second part that Bartimaeus had to weigh up was this. If he received his sight, he could no longer sit and beg for money. He would have to go out and get himself a job like anybody else. He would have to go and earn his keep. Did he really, really want a new life? Or was he happy enough just sitting, letting people put money into the palm of his hand? So having read out those two, he said, yes, Jesus, I want to receive my sight. And so he springs up, he throws the cloak off him. Now that was significant as well, because that cloak, day by day, year by year, was his, his safety blanket, his security blanket, if you like to put it. It, was, it kept him warm in the winter. And it kept him cool in the summer, kept the, the scorching heat from his body in the summer. As well as that, when people put money uh, into his hand, he was able to hide it underneath his cloak. So that was his security blanket. But he flings it off because he wants a new, fresh start to life. And yes, Jesus, I want to receive my sight. I'm happy to have a new life. Now, what about us? If Jesus 
said to you or to me, what do you want me to do for you? How would you answer? Do you want security? Wealth? Happiness? Health? Yes, maybe all of those. But what cloak, what security blanket would you be willing to shed to have a new life, a new beginning in Jesus Christ? You see, for Bartimaeus and for the Gospel, healing was not the end. Because we read, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. He showed his new life by setting out on a road to follow Jesus. A new and better life for Bartimaeus had begun. And likewise for you and for me, only when we share the, the, the cloak that hides all things wrong with us, only when we share our security blanket, only when we step out in faith and courage and trust God completely, even when we can't see the way ahead, but simply allow our faith to take control of our lives and to follow Jesus, because wherever Jesus leads and whenever Jesus leads, we know that surely the way is safe for us to travel. We stand for the creed. We believe in one God. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of our God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and only, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended in heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the giver of heaven, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and who has spoken through our prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Well, Margaret is going to lead us in our intercessions this morning. Let us pray. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world. We pray for churches that are not in any of the big Anglican provinces, for Anglican Christians in Bermuda, Sri Lanka, the Falkland Islands, Portugal and Spain. We remember also the Diocese of Bukavu and Bishop Bahati in the Democratic Republic of Congo as they continue to experience violent civil unrest as well as epidemic disease. Renew the life of our own diocese. Bless David, our bishop, your servant Walter, Maureen and Wendy, our lay readers, and all those who have any special ministry in this parish. 
including our select vestry, in what has been a very long time without a rector. We also pray this morning for the people of the parish of Killyleigh and their rector, Colin Darling. On this Bible Sunday, we give thanks for all who read scripture in public worship and those who study it together. Give us all discernment as we hear your word. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promise through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. We thank you that your written word continues to inspire us, showing us who you are, how you love us, and how we should live. And we pray for the members of our Sunday school and their teachers as we welcome them back today and as they learn from Scripture. As Jesus welcomed little children, we also pray for Mabel Lehman, who will be baptised this morning after this service. And we pray for her family, that the spirit of your love and peace will abide with them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of creation, we thank you that scripture shows us that you care for the whole world and all of its people. Heal us from the blindness that allows us to ignore urgent actions that need to be taken to restore the world and heal the problems facing its poorest people. We pray for world leaders about to attend the COP26 conference in Glasgow. Bless them with wisdom, creativity, and a shared vision of hope for all creation. May they find the determination to take strong action to halt the destructive effects of climate change and the political will to act together for the common good. And guide all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, remembering especially countries like Sudan and Lebanon that seem on the edge of renewed civil war. And encourage our leaders in Stormont and Westminster at a very stressful time. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, as she tries to balance her sense of duty with care for her own health. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of our relationships, comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work. Help us to find ways of dealing with our contested past that will encourage healing rather than opening up old wounds. As we prepare for winter, make us aware of neighbours who may need assistance with fewer bills and other expenses. And as we weary of regulations and distancing ourselves from others, help us to show our love for others by remaining careful in everything we do. Enable us all to love one another in the way that you love us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of all healing, many are grieving, especially over the last 18 months, grieving the loss of loved ones, the loss of hope, the loss of relationship, and the loss of businesses and employment. Bring comfort, healing, and hope to all who need you at this time. We pray for people who are sick or lonely in our community and for those who care for them. And we pray for those who have especially asked for our prayers. For Maureen and Brian, Helen and Maureen, Alistair, Geraldine, Cassie, Reggie, Margaret, Susan, Laura, Rebecca, Amanda, Stephen, 
Jimmy, Mary, Ken, Norma and family, Angela, Sam, Lauren, Dennis, Nicola, Trish, Alison, Maura, Ellen, Gary, Ina, William, Moira, Betty, Desmond, Violet, Lillian, and Sam. Help them to draw strength from hearing words of scripture. And as we think of the power of your word to set captives free, we pray too for all those who are chained by situations beyond their control or by sickness of body, mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of eternity, bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion with all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ. May we entrust ourselves and one another and our whole life to you, Lord God, and come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. sacred sign that flow of water mingled with blood. Be pleasant, be pleasant, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen high peace. Make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Amen. Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Lord Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. On the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.